Uh, this is Dave with the Espresso Service Network, and we're going to go over uh, taking uh, apart the La Marzocco and going over some of the basic components. On a new machine, there's actually going to be uh, some screws. There's, there would be one right here and one on the other side that is attaching this top panel to this panel. And this panel will have two screws, one here and one on the other side that you would need to be able to move. This is an older machine, but a lot of times the screws get removed and never put back. Once the screws are removed, you can remove all your panels. Now you have access to your brew groups. You have your bleed screws on top of your brew groups. So whenever you're doing an initial setup or for, for some reason, uh, air has been introduced into the water system. You want to bleed these groups, bleed the air out. Uh, some of the other components that you have here is for our PID controller, the, the digital uh, probe that's going into our brew boiler. Uh, I can't quite get that. So if you had an old style mechanical thermostat, this is where that would be sitting. And of course, it has a switch on top and it has an adjustment screw that you would get through the top here. The older style mechanical uh, thermostats are no longer available. And I recommend anyone that has those to uh, upgrade your system to the new PID controllers. So, this particular unit is uh, semi-automatic. So the only electronic box we have is over here and that is our liquid level control box. And of course, here's our fill probe that goes to that. And so what that controls obviously is it opens up a fill valve, which is down below here and turns the pump on. Here's our fill tube right here. And it has a check valve in line over on this side. There's our check valve. If this was an automatic volume dosing machine, then the electronic control board would be over on this side and it would be taking up most of this space right here. And there would also be a fan in the back. Is that to keep the, the control board cool? Yeah. Okay. Oh, well that makes sense with the boiler next to it, right? Yep. <laughs> Okay. So uh, here we have our steam valve. Uh, on most of the newer machines, the steam valves have individual shutoffs. So you could uh, rebuild a steam valve with the machine still on and pressurized just by simply turning this valve off. That's an excellent feature, isn't it? Yes. Are most machines you have to shut the machine down to do the steam valves? Yeah, it's getting it's becoming more common on more of the advanced machines for P for the manufacturers to put a shutoff valve in line or right at the boiler. Uh, but typically you're not going to see that on an entry level machine. Because okay. most entry level machines are they're trying to save cost as much as they can. Okay. So back on the steam boiler this is our upper sight, sight glass tube, and that tube runs to our sight, sight glass, which is right here. So on this upper sight tube itself, it is very common uh, for it to create a pinhole leak right where this connection is to the sight glass. And Usually that's after several years of use, it'll create that. And that's just due to the condensation of the steam becoming water again. It's sitting on copper and of course it's eating at the copper. The steam is your purest form of water and thus once it condensates and cools, it's gonna start attracting the mineral which uh, copper is going to be one of the metals that it's going to uh, absorb. So pure water attracts min minerals? Yes. Hmm, interesting. Um, It'll start absorbing. 
Here's your two boilers, steam boiler in the back and your brew boiler in the front. And the only time in the Linea Classic you'll have two brew boilers is if it's a four group. So just going down the line, so this is just our, our dip tube for our hot water supply. And of course that, that is going to our hot water valve. Which is actuated by a switch because this is a semi-automatic. On the volume dosing, it'll be controlled by the board based on time. And of course you can set that time. Here's our fill probe for the steam boiler. Here's our safety valve. So if we get an overpressure, this will open up at 1.8, 1.9 bar and relieve the steam off the boiler and then the next item is our vacuum valve the vacuum valve you're typically going to rebuild yearly so that's to create an open air gap in case we lose pressure uh, therefore we don't get any suction of milk back into the boiler also allows for uh, not having a false pressure when we're first heating up. It'll allow uh, the boiler to come to a boil and the steam will force it closed. And this is our pressure switch uh, connection T. So one end is going to our manometer that is measuring our steam pressure and also the, the lower part lower is for our brewing pressure which goes off of our brew boiler. And then if you follow this other tube here, that's going to our pressure switch. The older machines actually uh, had the pressure switch with the contact points inside and you did not have an external relay. So our, on our, all our newer units, they have a pressure switch that is controlling a contactor relay okay. that is right here. Okay. And the pressure switch is where I missed that. Is right here. Oh, gotcha. Okay. And of course, the adjustment is on top right here. Excellent. Thanks. And because we are on a separate boiler than our brewing, we can adjust our pressure a little bit higher. So generally we set them right about 1.4 to 1.5 bar is where they're set at. On a normal standard heat exchange system, we're usually at one bar. Here's our safety uh, switch. The actual, the newest machines, they actually have a dual pole safety switch that is actually um, connected directly to the heating element. Now, how old is this machine? This machine is, it, I think it's in between uh, 10 and 15 years old. Gotcha. It's definitely over than over 10. Okay. And now we'll go to the brew boiler. Okay. So brew boiler, here's our water inlet pipe, cold water going in from our pump. And then of course on the side of each group, We have a, uh, a water fitting going out into our valve. So to have access to your brew valves, first of all, if this was a, a automatic volume dosing, our flow meters would be accessible from the top here. They would be positioned right about here at each group. So and right in between the two yeah, boilers. Right in okay. between the two boilers. And there's you're gonna to wanna to have your machine off. You're gonna pull the knob off your on off and then there is five screws for this panel. Oh, two on each side and then one in the one, middle. Yep. Gotcha.
Was that, was that straight out? Yeah, it's straight out, but it kind of hooks on the sight assembly, the sight glass assembly. Okay. So here's our brew valves. And there's three. Yep. One for each group. Our water is coming out from the, the saturated brew group into our brew valve. And when the brew valve opens, water travels in there. There's an internal pipe inside the saturated group that leads to our screen here. And of course, on the bottom side, we have a, a drain coming off. And that's one um, a welded unit. So whenever you're rebuilding a valve, you have to take the whole drain system out. Or dis or you can just disconnect the one and then re-disconnect all of these pipes up here too. So drain tray is simply up and out. And so you'll see our our drain right here coming off our brew grew, our brew valves and going to this drain piece right here in our box. The other thing we have in our box is our expansion valve. Our expansion valve is adjustable. So while the machine is heating up, you wanna set it so you'll see the expansion on our manometer here, our pressure gauge. And you just, you'll see it climb. When it gets to about 12 is where we wanna adjust it at, is 12, 13 bar. Of course, the more you screw this out, the less pressure it'll be. It'll drop down, and the more you screw it in, the higher pressure it'll be. Common um, things that happen to the linea out there in the Common the things wild. that happen to the linea is obviously we went over the upper side tube. Oops, we want to be, be rebuilding our valves. The steam valves. The steam valves at least yearly. And if you're in high volume, you want to rebuild them sooner, about every six months. Um, vacuum valve we went over. Safety valve generally, um, I think the manufacturer goes over replacing them yearly. I've never seen one go bad in a year. Usually I go two to three years before I change one out. I always make sure that we uncap our T fitting here for our, our our pressure switch and make sure that it is clear because it will tend to have a little bit of buildup that'll build up at the end of this T right at the boiler connection. And that will create um, um, a situation where it's not reading the pressure correctly. It delays the pressure from being red when it goes to the off position and of course delays it from going back to on. Another common problem is obviously our contactor relay through time will need to be changed just because the contact points uh, go bad through time. They get carbonized to a point where they're not going to be making a good connection anymore. And how often would you say that? Off, I mean, here just again, average. It, it really depends on use, but it generally I've been finding they, they last quite a few years before you have to do that. But in a high volume situation, maybe you want to do it every other year. Are you, sm is it better to prematurely replace a part than it, it or just wait till it, it goes It depends on the part because these parts, the contactors are expensive. Oh, okay. This is, several hundred dollars for this part okay. versus your pressure switch is probably around sixty dollars gotcha okay other um, things you want to do you know maybe every other year rebuilding your brew valves because what you'll find through time is that they'll start opening up on a reheat at about 12 bar not our expansion valve course we're constantly wanting to make sure our expansion valve is is set correctly and typically you're going to replace that after several years of service too so you don't need to take the sides off of the machine to service the machine uh, yes you do 
So, oh, okay. to service other components. So, our fill valve is on this side, so we would need to remove this side panel here. Do you want me to move? No. And you slid that out? Yes. Okay. So, how this, it's going to hook right there and a screw right there. And it goes just underneath and you slide it forward so the back is hooked right now and then of course our screw is going to fasten the front and keep it from moving. So we just move it back a little, the bottom out, and then it'll slide right out. Great. And so there is our brew valve. I mean, not our brew valve, sorry, our inlet valve to the steam boiler. And there's the check valve for the steam boiler. And the other check valve for a brew boiler is right behind this, this bracket. So a very common problem, how you, can know, how you know this check valve is no longer working, is you never see the pressure climb on this on a reheat. If it just stays at whatever your building pressure is, say your building pressure is four, if it just stays there at four and it's doing a reheat, you can tell a reheat because this will illuminate. Oh, which, oh. Okay. This red light right gotcha. here will illuminate when it's heating. The brew boiler is heating. If this never climbs and you see no leaking out of either one of these valves, then you know your check valve has failed okay. and needs to be replaced. Would you consider this an easy machine to work on? Yes. Okay. It's a very easy machine to work on. Over on this side, this is where we're going to have access to our heating elements. So our main electrical is coming in on this side, obviously going to the main on off switch. Then we have our brew boiler heating element and our steam boiler heating element. All right, you want to put it back together?